You want to know who I am? To tell you my name would be to construct a mere label of a collection of momentary causal states. The label means nothing. It is ultimately empty. Likewise, the collection of states that it describes does not exist. It is also empty. But if you must refer to me as something, as I disclose to you the secrets of Madhyamaka truth, you may entitle me Nagarjuna. Although the Muni preached that descriptive labels such as teacher and prophet should have no import on those who offer you the truth, I will briefly describe myself for the sake of those doubtful. My homeland is India. I was born and raised there as well as taught everything that led me to Madhyamaka. I founded this new school in the second century as the true middle path of Buddhism. It was the most advanced and the only school which was ultimately correct. Ideas of consciousness, karma, and nirvana are all colorful concepts drawn by the Muni in hopes to enlighten the simple-minded. But for the truly exceptional thinkers, they may realize, as I have, that the Muni was not teaching them his most advanced thoughts of ultimate reality. He was protecting them from the overwhelming divergence of apparent reality with the ultimate. But now I will tell you the true secrets of the Madhyamaka school for it never hurts to have the ultimate goal in mind as we meditate on truth. I have many books and letters consisting of my arguments and goals on ultimate reality, some of the most important being the Mula Madhyamika Karika, or Fundamental Wisdom of the Middle Way, the Prajna Paramita, or the Perfection of Wisdom, and the Bodhicitta Vivarana, or the Exposition of Bodhicitta. Within these, I give you arguments such as the goer, going, and place of going logic, to validate the indistinguishability of the self, as well as the fire and fuel problem to demonstrate ultimate reality. My most renowned conceptual instrument, however, is my use of shunyata, or emptiness. It is my opinion that the Muni's use of upaya, or doctrine of skillful means, kept him from disclosing the most advanced teachings of ultimate reality from the simple-minded people of his time. Just as the Muni taught that the Four Noble Truths would have to eventually be abandoned, concepts of consciousness, karma, and even nirvana must likewise be abandoned. Perhaps these are the most difficult and deeply rooted dukkhas or desires for the human mind to let go, but only once have they been let go can true ultimate reality be seen. In order to simplify and eliminate all conceptual truths, let us now take a look at ultimate reality through my fire and fuel example. Try to picture the boundary between something that is burning and the fire itself. Are you able to distinguish where one ends and the other begins? Even at an atomic level, the fire fuel units can be simplified indefinitely. I have derived at four possible conclusions to satisfy this predicament. The fire and fuel are either the same, different, both the same and different, or neither the same nor different. Not only can the fire and fuel be considered neither the same nor different because of the indistinguishable boundary, but the concepts of same and different do not even apply. 
apply, they are empty. Likewise the concepts of both and neither also do not apply, they are empty as well. This is called the Chattaskoti, a tetralemma that two things are ultimately not the same, different, both, or neither. So what do we have left, you ask? Now you are beginning to see things as they truly are. All things, including the abstract concepts that categorize and describe them, are ultimately empty. Just so is the concept of ultimate reality. Imagine that here is everything that exists, which is trapped in samsara, and here is its determinant that nothing exists, the Muni's concept of nirvana. Just as the fire and fuel boundary, you cannot tell where one ends and the other begins. They are not the same, not different, not both, and not neither. They are ultimately empty, and emptiness itself is empty. No description or label may be attached. When the Buddha was asked, what is nirvana, he simply remained silent. Now that we have established what is ultimately true, everything else may be described as conceptual. The Yogacharans are becoming lost in conceptual truths such as karma and consciousness when they agree that there is only one ultimate truth. In the Bodhicitta Vivarana, I overthrew their false notions of consciousness as an idea of truth. I wrote, The Muni's teaching that the entire world is mere mind, is intended to remove fears of the simple-minded. It is not a teaching that concerns ultimate reality. Mind is but a name. It is nothing apart from its name. Consciousness must be regarded as but a name. The name, too, has no own being. Shunyata expresses non-origination, voidness, and lack of self. Those who practice it should not practice what is cultivated by the inferior. Whoever regards consciousness as momentary cannot accept it as permanent. If the mind is impermanent, how does it contradict Shunyata? When the Buddhas accept the mind as impermanent, why should they not accept it as empty? In short, consciousness is just another guide, such as the Four Noble Truths, that help the inferior Buddhist get on the right track. If everything is ultimately empty, including emptiness, how can one even begin to think that the idea of consciousness is ultimately true? The Yogacharans can create all the conceptual truths that they want, but all they are doing is creating more Hinayanas that will have to later be abandoned. The superior and only true middle path to enlightenment is the Madhyamaka goal of ultimate emptiness. Just so as the concept of consciousness can serve as a guide to the lesser Buddhist, the laws of karma may be used in the same manner. The laws of karma are useful in that they alleviate desire, but if one can see both desire and the laws of karma as empty, there is no need for this guide. If persons do not ultimately exist, and consciousness does not ultimately exist, then there can be nothing that ultimately acquires good and bad karma.